Okay, it's time for Swiss Sense. So if you want to know how their sensor works, come to the pitch stage. Okay. So, hello everyone. Um, I'm going to present you uh, the work of the Swiss Sense uh, EPFL team. So, a bit more about the timeline. So, at the beginning, we didn't know what detection principle to use. So, we spread out of the whole team into different labs at EPFL. We tried many things from carbon nanotubes to REM resistor. We even worked a lot of n on surface plasma resonance. And at the end, we opted for a fluorescence based detection. So I'm going to walk you through the whole process of each component of the prototype. But first, let's talk about the cartridge. So about the cartridge, and the micro it's a microfluidic chip. Uh, it's composed of PDMS, uh, bonded on a glass slide. Um, it's composed of two layers. I'm going to explain a bit more why after. And uh, it's uh, fabricated in a clean room environment with uh, multi-layer soft photolithography. So we create molds with uh, a photolithography process. We pour the PDMS that is a elastomer that is a liquid at the beginning onto the mold. We cure it and then we can peel off the PDMS and have the inverted structures, our channels onto the PDMS. So we do that two times, as you can see here, and we align them together on top of each other in a specific way. And the top layer is a bit is more thin than the bottom. So when we add some pressure, it's thin enough to deflect and press on the bottom channel and block it. So we have two different designs, the flow channel where the liquids and the regions will flow in, and control channels that will act, that are aligned on top of the flow channels. And the full design of the chip is this way where you have the inlet, you also have control valves, we created switches where you can have a full control of the microfluidic happening inside. And the most important part is that we have buttons, buttons with, where we can locally functionalize the, all the chemistry that is happening that my friend Vesna is going to talk to you about. Oops, thank you, Mary. So now I'm trying to explain to you why it's useful to have two layers of PDMS. So for this, we're going to see what's happening inside of the, the cartridge. Here you have the glass slide, and here it's our two layers of PDMS. First, we're going to flush biotinylated BSA. Then we flush neutravidin. And then we close those membranes, and we send again the biotinylated BSA. When we open the buttons, as you can see, we have localized free space of neutravidin where our primary bodies can uh, attach. So these are our primary, body, primary antibodies that have biotin. Then we send the plasma with secondary antibody that will bind to the primaries. And finally, we send the fluorophore, we close those buttons, and we take a picture. The picture will look something like this. You can clearly see the buttons, and you can see the fluorescence in it. The next step is to localize those buttons, to calculate the pixel intensity, and to correlate this with the concentration. Our system looks something like this. So we have the cartridge, we have the USB microscope, which is fluorescence, and we have all the electronics and the pump systems that drive the cartridge. Everything this is in a mechanical setup. What we are very proud of is that our lab setup looked something like this, with a lot of manifolds, with compressed air access, and with many tubings and pins. And what actually we achieve is to make a prototype, which is, contains only electronics, pumps, and valves, has USB fluorescent microscope, and it's very easy plug-and-play mechanism. The characteristic of our prototype is that the handling is very simple and can be loaded with simple with pipette. We load three reagents. The sample can be plasma or whole blood, and only 10 microliters are useful to detect the biomarker. The advantage is that we can do multiplexing. The surface chemistry is very stable, and what is most important is that it can be used to detect other biomarkers. So, as in conclusion, we fabricated and designed a compact and easy-to-use prototype. For now, we can only detect, by lack of time, 
only high concentrations that are at 10, nanom uh, 10 nanomolar per milli uh, 10 nanograms per milliliter, but it can be optimized. Uh, the sensitivity can be optimized through hardware by improving the electronics or having even a better microscope. And the software as well, if we work more on the signal processing and add some machine learning to have even more data and lower the concentration. We can also simplify the handling. For now, we have only three regions, but we can complexify the design so that we can only load only one region. And our ultimate goal really is to say that this prototype can detect anti-pro BNP, but we wanted to make, as, to make it a platform to detect many other biomarkers. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. So, any questions? No? Yeah. <laughs> um, you talked about these buttons, or how do you call? Yes. Why do you want only the dots and not the whole channel? Well, actually, we want to detect low concentration, and the idea is to concentrate the antigen in one place, and that's why we have these small buttons, so we can send the primaries only there, and the antigen will bind only there. If you have primaries everywhere, then the, the, the antigen will spread, and then the signal will be very low. Is that answering your question? Yes. Other questions? Then I have a question. What is the next step to go uh, to to, uh, to make you to make you uh, to make it possible to measure the low concentrations? Um, I would say it's uh, mostly more tests and playing more with the concentrations because technically it's possible. It has already been done with the lab uh, lab setup to go even to 500 picomolars and even to uh, hundreds of femtomolars in some cases, in the labs, of course. And now it's just even like, have even more tests with our prototype, play w more with concentrations. And yeah, I would like to add something. And we are using a USB microscope, which is, uh, uh, I would say, compared to big lab microscope, has less resolution. And the, ex the exciting, the LEDs that are excited the fluorophores are, are with less power. So maybe to work on the microscope and build ourselves a more powerful microscope fit that fits our needs. Okay, thank you.